crazy dog are back and she is sticking to me like velcro but she hates the pickup truck now <laughs> it's funny we, we uh sarah's niece is here and we were uh we took off to run some errands in town and through one of the griffin the little frenchie in the in the truck and they went to get uh, crazy over here and she stayed about 20 feet back from the pickup like uh-uh uh-uh you ain't making me go in there again uh-uh <laughs> So we had to catch her and chuck her in. I think she's had her fill of, of uh, road trips. What it took her three days to get home from up north. And then uh, what did I do? I just threw her in the truck for two days solid to get back up to where my pickup was. And then one, two, two days solid driving again back home. So she's had enough of that shit. Can't blame her, so have I. Ooh, so have I. I've put on so many miles this year. Anyway, quick note, uh, so Dave Plyas, he has released his latest film. I haven't a clue what's in it. I haven't a clue. I, haven't, I don't really spend much time actually talking to too many people for the past while. I've been too busy. So it's like fleeting texts, if that. I have a very tough time replying to texts and emails. I just do. I, I, I'm, I get overwhelmed 90% of the time with people trying to get a hold of me, trying to get me to do this, want me to see that, want me to do this. Please email me back. I've got the solution for this. You're a dick for not emailing me, and then I and then I'll get a shit pile of, e of hate mail, and then the majority of people are just absolutely frustrated with me for not doing what they want me to do, and it makes me almost snap. So it's tough for me to uh, get in contact with people lately. It'll pass. Um, so Dave, uh, text me, let me know his latest movies out. I got no problem promoting that for him. I I have a feeling there's some valuable valuable information in there. I would imagine. 
So there it is. I'll provide the link to it that he provided me in the video description below. And I tried to click on it, but it says it's not available in Canada. I'm like, what the hell? He did mention something would get me a copy somehow for me to watch. I don't know, whatever. I just hope that when I watch it, I don't end up on the floor with my thumb in my mouth, scared to go in the woods again. What else? So on the way home, do you guys remember, uh, it was a year or two ago, probably two years ago, I think it was like four or five in the morning, I videotaped those bright lights way up in the mountains. And those bright lights were, uh, I think, I think around two, no, four miles. It, I know for sure, well over two miles away from me, guaranteed. It might've been a few miles, three to four miles away. And I videotaped those bright lights way up in the middle of frickin' nowhere in those mountains, coastal mountains. And uh, that's what it is, but they were moving along. And then there was two and then there was one and they were very, very bright. Anyway, so I'm leaving. Uh, Lillooet, British Columbia, you can Google that up. And I started our drive on the Duffy Lake Highway at nighttime. We did that whole frickin' drive in the dark in a blizzard. But not normally daytime is enough to challenge your wits on that remote chunk of frickin' road anyway. But done it more than a few times, made it out okay. But anyways, in the beginning, I... That's adventure dog making a mess down there doing something. So uh, in the beginning of the drive, it's very remote, and I actually screenshot where I saw these two bright lights, but they're real close. So I pulled over on the side of the highway, and I got out with the video camera, and I videotaped them. And I think as the crow flies, they may have been from me mm, 600 meters, close enough for the camera to pick up exactly what it was in the lights. So anyway, I videotaped it, and here it is. Check this out. And then check out the screenshot that I took of where I was and where they were on the, to the highway and what the temperature is. And seeing where they were in the deep, steep, nasty gully straight down and straight back up to get to the highway. I don't know where they came from. I don't know what they were doing up there. I don't know how they got up there. All I know is they're freaking half crazy, right? Imagine, imagine being where they were and trying to get down there. I mean, that is some nasty ass break your neck slopes in there i haven't a clue what those two people were doing in there at that time but anyways there that is too i want to share that now let's get some voices going it's freezing in here i just went and split a bunch of fire before i came in here to warm me up so i could sit here more more comfort encounters hours from new york city hey steve Hope this is the correct email for your YouTube channel. I've been wanting to share for quite some time, but wanted to be respectful of others who needed their stories told. I've been following and liking your videos for about three years now. Thank you for giving us a place to feel safe and heard. Well, here it goes. I've attached a Word document and will pa paste my encounters storied below as well. Tight lines. Hope I can use your name. Joey Lopez. Okay, Joey. Hey, Steve. I hope all is well. My name is Joey, and I currently live in New Jersey, 15 minutes outside of New York City. No, I'm not a communist. I'm a freedom-loving 31-year-old American. I've been following your channel now since early 2020 and feel it's time for me to tell the community of my experiences. While I've never seen one of with my own two eyes, I've heard, felt, and been harassed by them before. Personally, I believe these interactions have happened because they know that I know. Based off many of the experiences you've shared here, I believe these creatures can essentially read our thoughts. Well, Steve, I'll do my best to clearly describe my experiences in southern New York and New Jersey, among the Appalachian Mountains. My first experience with something out there was a little lame, but it really opened my eyes. 
Steve, like yourself, I'm an avid fly fisherman. I religiously, religiously fly fish the upper Delaware River in the Catskill Park located in south, southeastern New York State. One afternoon, I drove downstream from Hancock to a relatively popular spot on the Pennsylvania side of the river. I typically show up after the crowds, so when I arrive at the parking lot, there are a dozen or so trucks there. This parking area is on the same side of the river. Opposite the parking lot and river is an immediate step steep forested slope. On multiple occasions, I've felt something was watching me here as I visit the spot often throughout the season. This evening was no different. As I got my gear out of the car, I could not shake the feeling of being watched. I turned around, faced the steep forested area across the street, and spoke out, I'm just getting my gear and going fishing. I'll be out of your space soon. I respect you and do not wish to upset you. I turned back to my trunk and resumed getting gear. Only a couple of seconds went by when somewhere up on this slope, a massive tree came crashing down. I did not see the tree come down, but it sounded like it was falling on top of me. I then realized there was absolutely no wind that day, not even a breeze. Nothing had changed in the, the environment that should or could explain why this tree went down. Of course, it could have been that tree's unlucky day. Perhaps tree was destined to fall. Yeah, right. My second encounter took place about 40 miles north of that spot again in the Catskill Mountains. I tagged along with friends to experience my first ever whitetail deer hunting camp. Early out first morning, early our first morning, four friends and I saddled up to drive up the mountain and get set up on the power lines, which cut through a friend's farm. I would not be hunting, but my years of stalking brown trout transferred to a solid foundation in whitetail deer hunting. As we walked the power line, I felt the party was too big and convinced one shooter and one other to set up on the intersection of three game trails. We settled on a massive boulder on the uphill side of the power lines. This spot provided ample cover while also giving us some elevation to have a great view down the mountain and over the game trails. As we sat there bullshitting, we all began to hear footsteps coming through the woods above and behind us. Then we heard what sounded like laughter, a child's laughter. My brain immediately registered this is a young boy who must have been trespassing onto the farm to do some hunting. A smile came across my face as they continued to head closer and closer to us, laughing occasionally as he had made a great escape off the property. Just when this young man should have come into view and walked right into us, the sounds completely stopped. We sat there holding our breath, waiting, but no one ever showed up. What I heard that morning was crystal clear. There was no mistaking what my ears were hearing. My third experience is by far the most terrifying experience I've ever endured in the outdoors. As I mentioned, Steve, I'm an avid angler. For those who pursue brown trout, they eventually learn the large predatory brown are nocturnal animals. During the summer month, I night fish. For anyone who has not gone out into the pitch black to pursue these fish, you need to. Between the house, between the house, I think you meant ours, of 12 to 4 a.m., lakes and rivers are entirely different fisheries. Don't believe me? Venture out there during a June-July night and experience it for yourself. I planned to meet two friends at Sterling Lake in northern Jersey. I arrived around 11.30 p.m., and my buddies were already out on the point fishing. To get to this small rock peninsula, one would walk past the large visitor center and walk about four to 500 yards along a lakeside trail. This trail is 10 to 15 feet away from the lake banks, most of its length before dropping into a pool-sized bowl. When one comes up out of this bowl, it's another 20 feet and you're at the outcropping of rocks we fished off. Once I passed the visitor center and began my short walk along the trail, I was hearing something following me. Like so many experiences shared here before, it was mirroring me step for step. When I moved, it moved. When I stopped, it stopped. Until it didn't. I had an incredibly powerful flashlight. You could probably see me from space. So I knew I would be able to light up whatever it was following me. It was then fear began to set in. Something was not right. I dropped into this poolside bowl and all hell broke loose. Before I get into this next part, I would like to add a few things. This event traumatized me so much, I forgot it happened for some time. What a crazy thing. Isn't the mind a crazy thing? Mind, adrenaline, and terror. Your mind, adrenaline, and terror combo. Does some crazy shit. My heart rate's climbing, and I'm beginning to sweat as I write this. Steve, for this story, I want to add that I'm an athlete. I played Division I college football 
at the University of Miami. I want this to be known, not for my ego, but to try and help the listeners know I've been around some of the most athletic, fast, and juke-capable humans on the planet Earth. As I dropped into this bowl, which is maybe 50 feet across, and dropped maybe 10 to 15 feet to the center, whatever was following me decided it was time to change my life. Oh shit, here we go. The brush in the trees around me erupted into violent shaking. I turned on my flashlight as whatever this monster was ran circles around me. It was behind me, then to my left, then to my right, in front of me, behind me again. Over and over, this thing harassed me. It was everywhere and nowhere at the same time. <clears throat> it was so close to me, there's absolutely no way I should not have seen this creature. There's absolutely no explanation as to why I could not see what was running circles around me. <clears throat> this is not dense old growth forest where you cannot see beyond 10 feet. I would have seen a chipmunk if it was there. All throughout this terrifying episode, I was screaming for my friends, screaming and screaming and screaming for them. I finally entered fight or flight and took off up the bowl towards where my friends were fishing. Utilizing all this 4.4 slash 40 speed. When I came up over the crest, my two buddies were standing there 25 feet away, perplexed. Did you not hear me screaming for you two? I immediately yelled at them. Why did you two not come? What the F? Did you two not F and hear that? Their response to this day has left me shook. They told me they could not hear me, that I sounded far away, and they couldn't make out what I was saying and figured I was just trying to locate them. Steve, I pissed my pants. I was so afraid. These were maybe 30, 40 feet away. The, these, I think he probably meant they were maybe 30 to 40 feet away and didn't hear a dick. Holy shit, that's messed up. I've never screamed so loud in my life. How in God's name did they not hear me? What makes less sense to me is how I could not see what was right in front of me. I was moving faster than any human, bear, cougar, or any other known animal that could potentially occupy the area. Sorry, it was moving faster. A crack head high, sorry, a crack head High on meth most certainly could not have surrounded me while shaking the forest everywhere I looked. I've never and will never return to that lake. My fourth and most recent encounter once again took place in the Catskills. Last June, I set out north for an overnight fishing send. A Betty and I arrived at the reservoir around 12 a.m. and planned to fish through 3 a.m. Fishing was slow, so we decided to head out around 2.30. When we arrived at the car... I was hearing what my brain interpreted as a semi-truck or some sort of vehicle approaching. I instinctually thought this was a car approaching because I regularly make this mistake. I confuse a road that meets the county highway. I was parked off being much closer to where I was parked than it is. As this noise continued to get louder, my sleepy brain woke up and I remembered there was no road over there at all. The road is a mile down the street from where I stood. Suddenly, I was listening to the howling scream of a woman coming from the effing woods. This was as real as oh my effing God moment. Mind you, Steve, all this is in the span of about four to five seconds. I immediately yelled to my buddy to get in the car and we peeled the F out of there, Steve. I had to drive past the area the screams were coming from. As we drove past, there was no denying what we were hearing. The screams of a female were coming from the wooded ravine. I called the local PD. God forbid someone was really getting hurt, but they sure as hell were not about to go. But as sure as hell were not about to go check it out. I told a few people about this encounter, and they all tried to convince me it was a bobcat, a coyote, or a bird. Let's get one thing straight. I know exactly what I heard that night, and I can hear it right now as I type this. Steve, so thank you so much for pro providing the platform for so many of us to feel heard. I've been made fun of a lot by people I consider friends for sharing these events. It is refreshing to know I have a safe community to learn from. I began following Instagram, and I'm so inspired by your life and character. I love your outspokenness against these China-worshipping, commie, fascist, hybrid scum that do everything in their power to destroy freedoms, lives, while stuff in their mouth and pockets. While stuff their mouths and pockets. We need to do some steelhead fishing. 
I hope to swing the Dean, Skeen, and Nass, Kispiox, and Northern Vancouver Island. Perhaps we can hike up once one day and chase some chrome. Thank you again, Steve. Feel free to use my name. Tight lines, Joey Lopez. Okay, Joey. Appreciate it, man. Wow, that's a lot for a lot. That's a, a bunch for some for us to wrap our noggins around, but a lot of this is kind of tying together in a way, don't you think? The uh, you know, one thing a lot of people mentioned is here in the huge, I saw, we heard this huge tree get pushed over right in front of us, we couldn't see it. That's been reported how many times? And I don't think we've ever had the photograph of the tree that fell over sent in once. I'm not even sure if the people that heard that noise, whether it be a simulated noise, or maybe it's a noise in a different plane. You know what I mean? With a very, very thin veil, possibly, where they might have been standing at the time. You never know, but it's kind of sounding like that, right? That could that could possibly be that could possibly make sense for a lot of these things people are hearing and they're not seeing shit. But they're picking up all the vibes and all the terror and all the frickin' high probably high frequency vibration slash electricity through their frickin' beings themselves, I don't know. But I have a funny feeling something's going on right next to us all the time, but we're just not there to be in that separate theater in a way. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, another side note on the fishing thing. A lot of people go fishing at nighttime. And brown, I mean, I've caught lots of browns in the river while steelhead fishing. They don't seem to be the toughest fish in the world to catch. But one thing for me, I want to see that river, man. I want to see where I'm casting. I want to see that chrome shining in the water, jumping out of the water. I want to watch my float go down the river and disappear and, and set the hook. You, you miss out on a lot of that nighttime fishing, don't you? I mean, you just kind of throw it in the water and stand there and look in the blackness or what? I don't know. So I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, huh, I'm just trying to picture fishing at nighttime and what I would miss fishing at nighttime. But anyway, yeah, man, you ever make it out here, I'll take a steelhead fishing. It won't be that far up north, but I got some hike in remote places to go to where there's a few fish. And uh, of course, it just happens to be coincidentally bullseye for where numerous First Nations people and others have had numerous experiences, right where I love to fish, of course, right? <laughs> My favorite blacktail deer hunting spot is right smack dab in the middle of the most experiences I've had. And then sure enough, my, my new favorite steelhead place is remote and it's smack dab bullseye in the middle of where there's a pistol and a sightings around there too. It's kind of weird, man. There's something to be said about this uh, parallel, parallel, existence going on right right alongside of us you know what i mean and that's possibly one of the only explanations there is for why yourself and so many people are having these unexplainable experiences but they're all similar they all have that similar flavor going on right they couldn't see it but they heard it like it was right behind them and then all your friends you're missing time seems like you're far away but you're not it's just a bunch of shit that that kind of points to the direction of going somewhere, but not, not quite going all the way, but caught in between. Or maybe even just caught with your foot in the door. I don't know, or is their, their foot caught just outside the door where we are? I don't know, it's a little much, it's way above my pay grade, right? But anyway, thanks for that email, man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Everybody's wheels are turning. Everybody's wheels are turning. And that's what we're doing here for sure. All right, here we go. Solo camping again. Resend because I haven't heard a red, but no problem. LOL. All right. Hello, Steve. This is my second email, though I haven't heard you read the first one, but I'm seriously fine with that. Just being able to share this is really so refreshing. Thank you for this round table of info. It has really blessed me. I'm a woman of faith in Jesus Christ. I believe he will always protect me but I need to use his to use wisdom. My first encounter occurred when I was camping alone in a small woods in Ohio. The encounter ruined my future plans to camp alone. My husband and I purchased many RVs and enjoyed extensive travel in every state. Had a physical issue, so hiking, etc. was not an option, so we drove everywhere we could to see as much of God's great green earth. I, often feel, I would often feel watched, especially at night walking our dogs. We were in the Radium Springs area, traveling in a Jeep on back roads exploring. I had to pee and ask my husband to pull over. 
as soon as he could find a place with a good break in the trees. He did, and he stayed in the Jeep, and I ran into the woods. I did my business and was overcome, overcome by the green in the woods and decided to snap a few pics on my phone before getting back to the Jeep. I looked around for a good angle, and then I saw this huge structure of, of woven trees. I felt an overwhelming fear, feeling of fear and to leave now. I ran as fast as I could back to the Jeep and told my husband to drive. My husband passed away in 2019. I'm sorry, sorry to hear that. My best friend loved my life. I loved to travel and wondered how to do this by myself. Would the world be as beautiful without him to share it with? Well, he would want me to try. So I decided I would make my minivan a micro camper with an attachable tent and recover what Bigfoot stole from me as a young woman. Your channel has so helped me to face this. So I went camping by myself in a campground on the outskirts of a large city. Not the same as being alone in the woods, but frankly, these beings go everywhere. So everything was going without incident. I was sleeping soundly and I was awoken with an owl hooting right over my head. Here we go, the owl thing again and again. I live in the woods and often have owls, and often have owls hooting. I often hoot back and my husband would love me talking to our resident owls, so I know what sounds they make. People on your channel have mentioned that Bigfoot often mimics other animals, but badly. So back to my story. I lay, I lay listening to the owl as I had no choice. After about 10 minutes, I started drifting back to sleep and then the scream. Sure enough, the flipping Sasquatch scream. I was so mad. Who, 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 scream. I said, oh no, you don't. In the name of Jesus, leave me alone. You're not allowed to freak me out. I will not yield to the fear. I don't want anything to do with you. I will camp. I'm allowed to be here. I'll enjoy God's green earth. You stay away. I went to sleep and I had dreams of all sorts of weird beings on my van and I stayed calm. It seems to me that once you have seen or had encounters, you continue to have them. I had many weird things happen as a child. I never wanted any of this. I would never do dumb stuff like wood knocks, etc. I want nothing to do with any of this. I do know that peace comes and the fear evaporates when I pray in the name of Jesus. I know many will lift their eyebrows with that said, whatever. Sorry, Steve, this is so long. I know the veil between this world and the second heavens is getting thinner. If Jesus' name is the key to stopping this, perhaps we should consider what that means. I don't want to preach, so I'll stop. Thank you again. I do believe the nation's governments do know things that they keep from us. What's new? Sincerely, Donna. P.S. You did read my first story today. Thanks. All good. Coincident Coincidentally. That's good news. What are you doing, adventure puppy? Huh? What's going on? Just having to check in, make sure I'm still here, I guess. It's funny how she's sticking to me like freaking glue everywhere I go. Which is a good thing, right? Now, oh good, she's gonna park it and sit there and watch and listen. You be safe out there while you're camping alone. I'm sure there's gonna be somebody else who wants to go with you. And uh, make sure you stay tuned in tune with your sixth sense, okay? That is the number one thing to as far as I'm concerned, in a preserving life, is being in tune with your sixth sense. We should almost change the name of sixth sense to staying in tune with your common sense, because our common sense is being nonstop stripped from us from a young age. I have, I have learned, come to accept that as fact for myself. Take from it what you will or leave it, but that is fact that I have come across for myself. Common sense is being stripped from us intentionally. Now, this next email is titled Sasquatch Topic. Hi, my name is Troy. I've lived my life in Wyoming. My family has owned a ranch in Wyoming since before it was a state. When I was in fifth grade, 1980, my mother, who was raising my little brother, baby sister, and myself, moved us to her hometown population of 320 people. Before that, we always spent the summers there running amok and helping out on the ranch. All those kids grew up together in that school, and so did their parents and grandparents. You can imagine how hard it would be to fit in. I hated school there and didn't give a shit. At the end of my fifth grade year, my teacher informed me that if I did not turn in two book reports, I would fail and have to repeat the grade over. 
So he sent me to the library to find something that interested me. I spent several, several hours there looking. Like your story of ordering a book with a monster on the cover, I found a book of a similar nature. I did turn in two reports and made it on to sixth grade. Things improved with getting to know the other kids and everything smoothened out. Made several good friends. The books were stories of people's encounters with these beings from all around the world. I could not quit reading about them. Some stories made you giggle and some stories absolutely left me scratching my head. The interest that it created in me with the unknown led me to reading about all sorts of different topics, Stonehenge, crop circles, UFOs, and lost or forgotten civilizations of this world. That interest kind of faded away with a new interest in girls and 4x4 trucks as life progressed. Marriage, kids, and grandkids. There were a lot of those things that still hung out in the back of my mind, and I would still find myself reading about those topics occasionally. I stumbled upon one of your videos on how to hunt with you telling about people's encounters, and it sparked that interest in me again. I have to say that I was sitting on my soggy ass, <laughs> laughed my ass off, and started looking into some of the little hints you have dropped. Wow. I grew up hunting and fishing with my grandfather and uncle, showing me the way. They were the father figures in my life. My uncle still has the ranch at 82 years of age, has no kids, totally dedicated his entire life to that ranch. Those are the kind of people that raised me and what I try to live up to. My family hunted for food, not for sport. We butchered all our, our meat and grew our own veggies. We fixed all the machinery ourselves. When I was old enough to maintain the swather and service it myself, that was now my job at 12 years of age. He taught me how to weld at about the same time. We had cattle and horses doing most of our own veterinary work, including calving season and helping cows having issues. Not something you really tell people about is being clear up to your armpit in a cow's ass at the age of 12 trying to get a hold of a calf's back feet and her shitting all over you. <laughs> Been there, done that. So many things in this world that general public have no idea. Exactly like what you say about people because what they are told by an authority figure, not information they have read about and researched to form their own opinion. They simply shut down and turn to either arrogance, sarcasm, or belittling that person or the people that raised them to be self-reliant. I guess that makes them more comfortable with their overall ignorance or lack of self-worth. So I guess what I'm saying is, us as a species on this rock have been here for a very short time compared to all the other animals. To form a general opinion that we all, that know, that we know, all, sorry, to form a general opinion that we know all, see all, and understand all is arrogant and naive. We do not even know all the truths about ourselves as a species. Thank you for doing what you do. Keep your head on a swivel and stay true to the chorus. Your neighbor on this small and amazing rock, Troy. Okay, man. Appreciate it. And uh, that lifestyle you just mentioned, a lot of people probably should have had a, a few tastes of that, of that life. We do not even know all the truths about ourselves as a species. Amen. That is the number one problem we've got going on right now. We're trying to wrap our heads around shit. We don't know our truth currently. We don't. There's no way we know our absolute truth currently today. That is a huge roadblock in trying to wrap our noggins around the rest of this shit. Right? But we're going to get there. As long as we don't quit. That's the key. You don't quit. I don't give a shit what it is, what the subject is. You want to learn? You want to get better? You want to achieve something? You don't quit. You don't go away. You don't quit. You don't let anybody piss in your flames. Period. That's why we're here. Because I'm not quitting. I don't quit. Have you noticed? <laughs> Moving along. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. It's just... It's horses running. The horses are out. <laughs> running around. Well, that's the first time Adventure Puppy's been a guard dog. Look at her go. What is it? Is this, is this a couple of big black monsters? Ruby. It's the horses. Oh, and the goats. Okay, calm down. There's the goats. Okay, settle down. <laughs> There you go, my little guard dog. Just she just graduated to guard dog level. Good girl. 
Good girl. She's protecting daddy. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Let's mark this one as red. Okay, the title, Story from India Revised. Dear Steve, I'm so sorry for getting the details of my story so wrong. You've probably already read it out. Uh-oh, my wife corrected me. The master's name is Sri M, not Master M. His videos can be found on YouTube. The story goes like this. He was in the high Himalayas with his master and a Sherpa. He got very ill, so was bed-bound in his tent in the company of the Sherpa and his master. That night, his master seemed to disappear. He couldn't be found anywhere. After, after much calling out, then the huge, white, bipedal, hairy creature entered the tent, but he couldn't move. Only watch in astonishment, as his master was still nowhere to be seen. The creature seemed to fill the large tent. There was a beautiful scent coming off the hairy creature. Something like flowers. The huge creature had a sweet, sticky substance in its hand and shoved it into the Sri M's mouth. The Sherpa witnessed the whole thing as he was sharing the tent. The next morning, he was fine after feeling, after feeling to be at death's door the night before. When the story was told to his master, it was greeted with an understanding chuckle and a knowing, and a knowing smile. The Sherpa didn't seem to be surprised in the least. Really, it has been my experience that the truth really is stranger than fiction. Thank you again, Steve, for you, for you and yours. Love and gratitude to all here. Jamie Hillier, Tipperary Mountains, Ireland. All right. Definitely rings a bell. I think it was a while back that we read that one from you, right? From, from, the, from India. And another reason why, unfortunately, it's not possible every time, but we need everybody to put everything in one email, right? Because otherwise we'll read another follow-up or whatever up to months and months later, and that won't make sense to a lot of people. My finger's about to go numb. I got to get in. East Texas Encounter, question mark. Hi, Steve. My name's Stuart Brady. You can use my name because I don't give a hairy rat's ass what people think anymore, especially in the last 10 or 15 years when the most of the stupid bullshit started in our country. I want to thank you for brutal honesty and no shit attitude. An awesome trait we just don't see much of anymore. We need more like you in this effed up world right now to help get back on track and take our countries back from the lying low life scum suckers that are trying to control us all. I'm all in for enlisting in your good guys army and I'm ready to fight if need be when the shit hits the fan, if you know what I mean. Thanks for giving us the platform to get stuff like this off our minds and hopefully come to grips with the truth about what's going on out there and why we've all been lied to since we were kids. I'm now 66 years old and I've hunted and fished my, all my life in Southeast Texas, being taught early on by my grandfather and older cousins with whom we camped out in the forest of East Texas a lot or around the bayous and swamps and marshes of Southeast Texas and can shoot the hairs off a gnat's ass at 250 yards. Anyway, enough about me. On with my story. I can't remember all, I can remember all this like yesterday. One July night, 73 out of 17, some friends I'll leave nameless, and I decided to go see the Saratoga Light on Bragg Road, now called Ghost Road Scenic Drive. Just north of Saratoga, Texas, in my old 61 Ford six-cylinder pickup truck. We had gone there a half a dozen times before with different friends and vehicles. It's an old railroad track that they once used in the 1800s for shipping supplies to Beaumont during the oil boom but turned it into a one-lane dirt road in 34. The road turns off Highway 787 out of Saratoga, heads north, and is straight as an arrow for about eight miles to Highway 1293. It's all part of the big thicket forest. In early 70s, when we'd go see the, the light, there was nothing but woods and swamp for miles around. You can Google Bragg Road and the Saratoga lights and read about it. There has always been weird shit reported around that area. We'd drive down the road to where it hits the, the other highway and turned around to go back a few miles and park and wait. We always had good luck seeing the mysterious light coming down the road. No way. The story is some railroad worker was decapitated and is looking for his head with his lantern. Scary as hell. Anyway, my girlfriend and I, her sister and my best friend and a few other friends all piled in my old truck. We four in the front and the others were in the, in the truck bed. It's about a 60 mile trip from Port Arthur where we lived. It was a warm summer moonlit night and we got there about midnight and parked and waited for the light to show up. 
After an hour or so of waiting, nothing was happening and everything seemed dead still. So we decided to walk down the roadways. I had my old British Enfield 303 rifle. Had one, first gun ever, with me for whatever reason, being you just didn't go into the woods at night ever without some sort of protection. One of my grandpa lessons. So, we had walked about 50 feet when we started hearing something heavy paralleling us for 20 or 30 yards in the woods, cracking branches and making huffing sounds. We would walk and it matched our steps. When we stopped, it stopped and so on for around 100 yards or so. And we were freaked out, especially the girls that were with us. I thought it was some hobo or someone messing with us. None of us had ever heard of a Bigfoot at that time, so, so that didn't even occur to us. So we came up with a plan that on the count of three, everyone but me and my friend were to take off running back to the truck and we would stay there. And what followed them back, me and my friend and trusty old rifle would get behind them and score the, and scare the shit out of them. So on three, everyone took off and the damn thing stayed there with me and my buddy. We could hear it shuffling around and grunting or something. That's when I thought maybe it was a bear. But they weren't, but there weren't supposed to be any bears around there. I told my friend I could hear it by that big tree and the big stump silhouette that was about 20 yards in the tree line. The tree was a hundred footer. The stump was about eight or nine feet tall. So we were straining our eyes trying to see what was out there when the big stump started swaying back and forth with no wind whatsoever. And that's when me and my friend almost shit ourselves. I fired a shot towards it and we both took off like a bat out of hell for the truck. We could hear it running beside us in the woods with heavy footfalls. You could feel in the ground. It was smashing bushes and trees as it paralleled us. As we got close to the truck, I was screaming for everyone to get in the truck. I fired another round in the air, jumped in the truck, cranked it up, and pulled wheelies getting out of there as fast as we could. That old truck thought it had a hemi in it. After the initial panicking, we didn't speak a word until we got into Beaumont, and when we did, it was just small talk and not a word about what had happened was ever said. I never went back to... Oops, shit. Hate it when I do that. I never went back to see the light, and my friends eventually moved on to other friend circles, and nothing was ever said about it between us. I always thought it had to have been some, had to have been some bear that had wandered into the, that area. But sometime later, I saw the legend of Boggy Creek, and I realized that's what we may have seen that night. And what was even weirder, a few months before that, three friends and I took my mom, 65, and pal up there and saw the light that night. And on the way home, everyone was asleep but me driving. It was around 6 a.m. We were cruising down the highway, headed home, when out of the corner of my eye, I saw some big black thing run up and slam into the side of my mom's car. It hit the right quarter panel and smashed the shit out of it. It turned the car sideways. And I and ran off the road. Everybody woke up freaking out. I thought a big deer had hit us and we all got out and searched for it, but never found anything. My mom was pissed at me when I got home and her car was smashed all to shit. I told her a deer ran into us. She didn't believe me till we found long reddish black hair on the side molding clips where the molding was tore off. Always told myself it was a deer till I later realized deer hair wasn't that long. I haven't really thought about all these experiences till I started following your channel a couple years ago. I binge watched till I got caught up. LOL. I used to do a lot of solo hunting when I lived in southeast Texas. I always loved being in the woods with nature, but never realized some of the noises and things being thrown around me were maybe associated with Sabe. I always thought it was squirrels and birds till I started watching your show and, and put the pieces together. I also shot a huge wolf in East Texas one morning that had snuck up on me to about 15 yards while I dozed, sitting against a tree waiting for shooting time. I just happened to open my eyes, and there it was glaring at me. That scared the crap out of me. My 30-30 Winch Winchester dropped in one shot. I've lived in central Texas now for the last 30 years, and there's not too many places to deer hunt around here unless you want to pay, which comes out to about 500 bucks a pound for deer meat. That sucks. So sad. My son and I mostly fish now and dove hunt in the fall with an occasional trip to East Texas to deer hunt. Sorry my story's so long, but when I started writing it, all these memories came rushing back in my head, and there's still plenty more in there, LOL. I truly hope this helps someone with their own puzzle. It sure helps me. 
Please don't stop what you do here for the people. Believe me, you, my friend, are greatly appreciated by a shitload of people. And we are also missing Sarah's cooking show. What's up with that? Love all the drone and camera shots, man. You're living the dream. I need to come up there and rip some lips with you. Thanks again, amigo. Stu in Texas. P.S. I hope my punctuation is good. It's been a long time since I've written anything. Well, I feel like I read it pretty smooth, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate that time. Texas, Texas, Texas. Been to Texas. I've done a lot of crazy shit in Texas. I love that state. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know if I'd love it that much if I had to pay. To get, I, it, it's it's sad. I've, in many states I've been to. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it all down there with when it comes to private land and paying and people leasing farms and farmers getting more money to lease their land for deer hunting than they did for cropping it out. It's kind of sucks, right? Because you got to feel for all those people out there that love hunting and they can't go so they can't pay the big bucks. That's so obviously you guys know where I live. We don't have that here. So for me to observe it going on down there it really makes me feel bad for a lot of people because it's just kind of not fair, right? But anyway, appreciate you sending that in, man. And I hope uh, you sending yours in knee jerks somebody else to send in theirs too. And I'll bet they've probably had the same experiences where you had yours, right? But the long hair on the side of the car getting slammed. There you go. How many times has that happened, right? Anyway, I'm about froze now. It's been snowing right outside the wide open shop door the whole time. I know there's no heat in here yet. <laughs> Proper heat, but there will be. I'm going to go take Adventure Dog and go feed the horses, feed the goats, shut the chickens up, and uh, continue on getting caught up with my shit around here. I'll be back shortly. Don't forget to uh, give Dave Platis' next fleck, Missing 401. What's it? What is it? The UFO Sasquatch connection or something? Or Bigfoot connection? I haven't even read it yet properly, but I'll put a link in the description below. All right. And give that a go. And, uh, oh, shit, it's cold in here. I'll be back again shortly.